Hey, honey. Hey, Baba. We're about done. This is Chella. Chella's a 2005 Hunter 456. She's 46 feet overall. She's just been just about completely, painfully retrofitted, including solar and lithium and a water maker. She's very easy to single hand and sails very nicely. So far, I've sailed her about 3,500 miles, mostly single handed, some with my son, big boy Peter Dickinson the Great. It was a great way to find the things that need to be worked on. The retrofitting and replacing and adding was painful, but it was done. Tomorrow, at slack tide, I will untie the boat and head off. First to get diesel, then the anchor, wait for Saturday morning early, and start off south, ultimately ending at West Palm, waiting for good weather, and then crossing over to the Bahamas where I'll meet my wife. And then later in November, we will pick, pick up my son. The adventure begins. Right now, we are at Hidden Harbor Marina, which is at US 1 and King Street in St. Augustine, Florida. It's a very nice marina. They were very kind to us. They gave us what I think is their best spot um, because we come and go so often. I think in the last year, I've been gone about three and a half months, but we will leave tomorrow morning at low tide, right as the tide starts to come in. And we will come out and go to the fuel dock at the St. Augustine Municipal Marina. I need the tide to be incoming so it's going against me as I land and leave. Um, this doesn't give you a good idea of the distance between the two, the fuel dock and the other dock, but there's not enough room to turn around. So I'll bow thrust her off and then let the tide kind of push me as I continue my turn. That's about four miles. It'll take about uh, an hour. From the fuel dock, we will go out and we wait for the Bridge of Lions to open. They open every 30 minutes on the hour. And then from there, we will, there's the ocean. We will come over to this anchor spot and we will anchor on Friday. From our anchorage by the Volano Bridge, on Saturday morning as the sun comes up, we'll ease out into the ocean. It's really not that dangerous, is it? It's not that bad. And we should have a 10 to 15 knot breeze from the west northwest, which is perfect. Weighs maybe initially three to four feet, but calming some. And we will sail down to um, Cape Canaveral, be about 15 miles offshore, and continue to sail down to Fort Pierce. And that should take about 35 hours. It's about 170 miles. So it's an all night sail. Hope at Cape Canaveral is a place to stay on your toes. I've, I've done that twice and each time I had to dodge cruise ships and um, tankers coming in. But it should be an easy sail. So we will leave St. Augustine Saturday morning when the sun comes up about 7.20 and it will take 35 hours or so, we will sail down to Fort Pierce and get there Sunday late afternoon. 
I will probably take Monday off and then on Tuesday we will sail south to West Palm Beach and that should take about 11 and a half hours I think it's about 67 miles uh, again we should have a good breeze the waves won't be too bad and from there we will anchor depending on if we have good weather to go to the Bahamas then we will anchor here and if we don't we'll come back further and get out of everybody's way and anchor back here and then move forward when we're getting ready I may leave at 2 in the morning to get there before the sun goes down or I may leave uh, as the sun is setting to make my crossing to the Bahamas but I want uh, the wind coming from south or southwest I don't know how long it will take to make my uh, have the weather to cross when we cross from West Palm Beach it'll be about 72 miles we'll go past the West End and there is a, an abandoned development with an amazing basin and marina and it's a great place to anchor and there I will uh, the tickets for my wife Cynthia and a day before she arrives I will uh, move my boat to a very very nice marina a day before Cynthia arrives I will sail down the Grand Bahamas to the Grand Bahama Yacht Club which is supposed to be very nice and from there, it'll be easy for me to go pick up Cynthia at the airport. I have to be there since she has a one-way ticket. I have to show her the documentation that she's going to be on the boat. And we will probably stay there two or three nights while she kind of adjusts to being on the boat. And at that point, we'll reverse track and we will come back to... The abandoned development that I started at and we will go get big boy P.D. Dickinson the Great. From the abandoned development we will sail around the north end of the Grand Bahamas and pass um, the last marina and we will cross over into the Abaco Banks. Um, we'll do this on an incoming tide. This section can be shallow, so we want to be a rising tide all the way through and also give, give us a little push. It's about 45 miles to our first anchorage, which is then about 15 miles from um, the Abaco Islands. Now we may stay there a day or two. It just depends on what Cynthia wants to do. We should be here by probably November 5th or maybe 6th or 7th and we will slowly meander our way through the Abacos stopping at different islands for two weeks maybe less or more until ultimately we end at Marsh Harbor. Um, my son will arrive, Bubba, at, um, on the 18th, very late at night. We'll probably stay anchored here for a day and we'll have him for about a week. And with no agenda, then we'll head back into the Abaco so we can snorkel and fish. Um, I have a feeling with on bubble and board we will be eating a lot of fish and lobster and that starts our journey so today is October 12th I'll leave on the 13th and that will give me almost a month to get to 
the Bahamas to pick up my wife, Cynthia, and then go get my son, big boy, Petey Dickinson. And there's the scheme of things. Once we drop Bubba back off at the airport at Marsh Harbor, then Cynthia and I will just go. Stay tuned.